Hello. Hello, everyone. I'd like to talk to you about this multifunctional studio camera. Would you just move? Multifunctional studio camera setup vlog. It's camera setup photos setup. As most of you know, have seen, if you haven't, you need to go watch my things. But as most of you know, who have watched my things, you know that I have uh, developed here at my new house, the new house that we live in, a multifunctional studio. As a matter of fact, this is multifunctional because uh, I just set this up to film this video. So this studio area that I'm in is, uh, there's a lot that can happen in this room. And one of the key components to that is being ready to roll in any situation that I want to film in quickly. And so earlier this year, I started to, in, in my opinion, at least in my effort, to up my Instagram game as well as uh, my um, YouTube content creation. And so inspired very much by Sorrel. Yes, I did coin the phrase advanced selfie and it is taking the world by storm. Appreciate Sorrel, what she brings to the internet, the content that she, uh, she provides because it's, it's done a lot for me. Um, inspired by her advanced selfies, I decided to start doing advanced selfies, which is basically where I take my camera, very reliable Joby Gorillapod here, but it's basically where I take my camera and I set it up and I take a photo of myself like I would with a selfie, but it's using my phone to control my camera and so I'm getting the good real camera quality and it's, it's cool. It's awesome. So anyway, this brought a challenge. At the time, I only had two cameras, and the one that I vlogged with on the regular was this one. So this was my main camera for everything. Now, I have three cameras, so it's a little more uh, diverse. But what happened was, is I was between these photos, which I was taking vertical, and I had my video stuff that I was making, which I was doing this way, and I just was having to reconfigure the camera all the time. That's what it ended up being. I was having to reconfigure this thing on the regular basis. Then on top of that, I would do overhead shots in my product reviews, and so that's another way that I'm having to do it, because whenever I would do that, I would use the other camera to film me, and then I would use this for the overhead. And it's just, it was a whole thing, and it got to be where I was being demotivated instead of motivated to make content because it was just the, the, the path of least resistance had not been created like it had been in some of the other areas that I film in. So when I film my Bible teaching stuff, there, it's a path of least resistance. I've, I've created a path of least resistance, at least a path of less resistance to create those videos because I have, you know, created the room primarily around that form of content. But everything else, so much resistance. So that's when I came up with the multifunctional vlog photo studio camera setup. And that is this. And so I want to show it to you. The only exception to this is that normally I have a Sony 10 to 18 millimeter F4 on this camera. I do use this lens for photos, but I normally for video, I keep that uh, Sony lens on here. Uh, and the reason it's not on here right now is because it's on, it's on that camera. And in case you're wondering, yes, you can use that uh, APC lens or any APC lens on the a7 III. And I'm sure you can use it on any of them that are full frame. But on the a7 III, I know for sure that once you put the lens on, automatically clicks over. I don't have to mess with any settings. It just treats it like a native lens. So I have an a7 III 6500 right now. So let me show you kind of the setup that I'm dealing with here. First of all, this is an a6500. Now I know that they have the new a6400, which honestly would probably fit my setup a little better, but I've had the 6500. Uh, I got it when I still had an a7 II, an a7S II. I correct myself. So anyway, this camera is in a, um, and I'll link everything up below because I've got the Sigma 16 millimeter and I've got the Sony 10 to 18 that are really crucial to this setup as well. So I've got the A6500, then I've got them in a small rig cage. So you see it's on a cage here. 
The cage is very essential to this process. Now from there, I have these little quick release plates. Now these quick release plates are really important and there's a system that you need to understand with these. They're super fast, they're super flexible, they do a lot of stuff. I've got these uh, ball, what would these be called? Ball head mounts, something like that, ball joints. I don't know. But I've got these heads on a bunch of different stuff around the studio. This one specifically is, I like this one the best, and I, I have a bunch of these. I've, I'm on one right now. I've got another one on my overhead rig, which I'm gonna do another video on that. But these, and then these quick release plates, I buy extra quick release plates. I'm just gonna link this stuff up in the description below so you can see and get those. They're not super expensive, but they're super quick. And one of the things I like about these versus like the Joby head is there is an extra lock for the ball in here. So once you get it set, especially if you're doing overhead stuff and you've got to hold the camera, you know, at a vertical or a horizontal deal, you want to have that extra strength because it's not it's not pushing down to mount it into place. It's, there's going to be a pull on that ball joint the whole time. So these are crucial. Now on this camera, I have one here on the bottom so I can set it up to do video normal YouTube videos. I've got one on the side so I can set it up to do photos, vertical photos. I try to do all my photos vertical in case I want to circle back around and use them in my stories online. So I'm cropping them down to a uh, one-to-one -one ratio, you know, making them square. But then if I want to circle back around and put them in a story, I want to have that vertical picture. So that's why I do that. And then I also have this mount on top. That way, whenever I do overhead shots, it is easier for me in the moment. Here's why. I could mount it here for an overhead shot because I mount from this direction. I could mount it on the bottom. The problem is, even though I can put it in the editor and just turn it upside down, when I'm looking in the monitor, all of my motions are reverse of what I'm doing. So if I move my hands this way, to me, I'm moving them up, but on the screen, I would be moving them down. So by mounting the camera in the correct orientation, it helps me when I'm looking in a screen to make sure that I'm doing everything the right way for you guys. So it's really helpful. Now, the next multifunctional thing with this camera is the microphone. I love the Rode Video Micro. It's probably my favorite microphone for quick, down and dirty, super easy. I'm gonna be upgrading some stuff in the studio with microphones soon, but you're listening to a Rode Video Micro. I have a Rode Video Micro right here. So what I did, I, I ran into a problem because once I put this mount up here, I could no longer use the cold shoe for mounting the microphone. And then I didn't like having it on the side. I just, I don't know why. It just really bothered me at being on the side. Uh, so can't do that either. So what I did is I have this little small rig uh, Magic friction arm. It's a really tiny one. I don't know if you can see that. It's a super tiny magic friction arm. So all I have to do whenever I need to mount this way, whenever I'm mounting for an overhead shot, is, uh, is just move it. There you go. So I just move it out of the way and I've got a little loose there. Move it out of the way and I'm ready to mount it up. Now here's another cool thing that I do when I mount it. I will literally use this for my microphone and that way I don't have to worry about um, setting up another stand or anything. So whenever I do an overhead deal, I'll just mount that there and then I have the microphone ready to go and I'll use the audio from this camera and that just makes life super easy. But there's one other thing that be kind of became a, uh, a benefit that was unintended and that is that uh, whenever I show people stuff around the studio, which is more rare right now than it's going to be because we're going to be, we're going to be amping that up. Um, whenever I show people stuff around the studio, I have a tendency to go from vlogging to turning the camera around. And when you do this with the Rode Video Micro, I'm assuming any other kind of video shotgun mic that you put on top of your camera, now, I, of everything in the room, I am the least heard thing. I'm getting the least signal to the camera because these are directional and I'm talking anti-direction to this camera. 
beautiful thing here. Because of this setup, whenever I'm talking to the camera, I can literally just turn it around and now the microphone is on me. So I, just so you can hear, I am going to switch over to this camera right now. Okay, so now this is this camera that I'm talking into. This is the audio that you hear. Matter of fact, you're even seeing the video. I made that after I started talking that decision. So here's my setup for right now, just so you see. This is the um, uh, uh, 10 to 18. You see I'm fully wide right now, and I can zoom in. So it's a nice wide shot. That camera's probably two foot away from me, maybe at most. And you see how wide that is there on the screen. All right, so back to this camera. So this is my multifunctional setup. The only thing that I do uh, on occasion is I change the lens out. Now, <clears throat> in an ideal world, I would probably not even have this anymore. I'd probably have two A7 III's. Uh, additionally, and I would have one a7 III set up like this ready to go in the studio, and then I would have another a7 III ready just for vlogging. I will tell you that when vlogging with this, it can get a little heavy, uh, but no, I don't think it's any heavier than the a7 III. Now, sometimes I will not take this if I need a more multifunctional uh, deal when I'm gone on a trip or something. I'll actually take the a7 III with the 10 to 18 as the vlog rig, and then I'll take my Tamron 28 to 75. That way I can switch out if I need to do other types of content like event photos or anything like that. Sometimes when we're doing stuff, we just want to capture as much as we can. Um, so there we go, multifunctional camera rig. So hopefully that was helpful. All this stuff will be linked up in the description below. The uh, quick release plates, the ball mount heads, um, the uh, microphone, the small rig, cage, this little arm, and uh, yeah, I think that's everything. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna link all of those things up, and uh, I hope you like this. So if you like this kind of content, make sure that you like, comment, subscribe, uh, click the bell so you get notified anytime I post new content, and uh, I'll see you in the next video.